Now this one is Civil Defence Public Information Leaflet number 2 which is a combination of your gas mask and how to keep it, how to use it and masking your windows. Again read this carefully issued by the Lord Privy Seals Office 1939 Your gas mask Take care of your gas mask and your gas mask will take care of you. It is possible that in war your life may depend on your gas mask and the condition in which it had been kept. The official gas mask or respirator consists of a metal container filled with material which absorbs the gas and a rubber face piece with a non-inflammable transparent window. Some people seem to think that this mask does not look as if it would offer very good protection. Actually, it has been most carefully designed and carefully tested and will give you adequate protection against breathing any of the known war gases. But remember, it will not protect you from the ordinary gas that you burn in a gas cooker or gas fire. How to store it? Because there was a big problem with storing gas masks because people used to just swing them around by the, by the harnesses and break them. Your mask should be kept carefully. Never hang it up by the straps which fasten it on over the head. This will pull the rubber face piece out of, out of shape so that it no longer fits you properly. It should be kept in the special box provided, which the special box was just made of cardboard, where this has been issued, but any box which is airtight or nearly so will do. When placed in the box, the metal container should lie flat with the rubber face piece uppermost, the transparent window lying evenly on top at full length. Great care should be taken not to bend or fold the window or to let it get scratched, cracked or dented. Keep the box in a cool place away from strong light. Exposure to heat or prolonged exposure to strong light will spoil the material of the mask and it may cease to give complete protection. It should never be held close to fire or hot water pipes are left lying out in the sun. And I do know they do perish because I've got a few in the cardboard boxes and they've just completely rotted and stuck together. How to put the gas mask on, on and off. It's important to know how to put on your mask quickly and properly. You may need to do this in a hurry. To put it on, hold the mask by each of the side straps with the thumbs underneath and the inside of the window facing you. Then lift the mask to your face, push your chin forwards into it and then draw the straps over the top of your head as far as they will go. See that the straps are properly adjusted and leave them so. To remove the mask, insert the thumb under the buckle at the back of your head and then pull it forward over the top of your head so that the mask is lowered downwards from the face. Never try to lift the mask off upwards or by pulling the container or the edge of the rubber at the chin. To prevent the window from misting over when the mask is worn, wet the end of a finger and rub it on a piece of toilet soap, then rub the finger all over the inside of the window so as to leave a thin film of soap. Putting your mask away, after the mask has been used, you will find that it is wet on the inside with moisture from the breath. This should be wiped off with a soft dry cloth and the mask allowed to dry before it is put away in its box. Do not try to dry it by applying heat. The contents of the container do not deteriorate either with age or with wearing the mask when the gas is not present, which actually they do deteriorate with age. But if you suspect any flaw in your gas mask, you should inform your local air raid warden. It is a good thing to get out your gas mask occasionally and put it on so as to get used to wearing it, and if you take the simple precaution set out above, you will ensure that it is always ready for your protection, and it goes on to masking your windows. In war, one of our great protections against the dangers of air attack after nightfall would be the blackout. On the outbreak of hostilities, all external lights and street lighting will be totally extinguished, so as to give hostile aircraft no indication as to their whereabouts. But this will not be fully effective unless you, picked out, you, do your part and see that no lighting in the house where you live is visible from the outside. The motto for safety will be keep it dark. Every occupier of rooms, house or flat will be responsible for darkening his own lights. Lights in the halls or on the staircases or blocks of flats or dwellings will be the responsibility of the landlord or owner. Of course the most convenient way of shutting them in the light is to use close fitting blinds. These can be of any thick dark coloured material such as dark blue or black or dark green glazed Holland, Lancaster or Italian cloth. If you cannot manage this, you should obscure your windows by fixing up sheets of black paper or thick dark brown paper mounted on buttons. And on the back we have... Alternately, thick curtains of suitable material will serve if they really cover the window frames with a bit to spare all round. The simplest way of testing material, whether for blinds or curtains, is to hold up a piece of, against an electric bulb. If no light shows through, or only scattered pinholes of light are seen, then the material will do. If a patch of light shows through, it is no use. Possibly if you have blinds already fitted to your windows, if the material is not sufficiently opaque, you can treat it with oil bound water paint or distemper of some dark colour. The following mixture can be applied with a brush. One pound of concentrated size three one pound of concentrated size, three pound lamp black in powder form, 
half a gill of gold size. The size and lamp black should be thoroughly mixed and two and a half gallons of boiling water added. This quantity will cover about 80 square yards of material. If your blinds do not fit very closely, you could paint the edges of the window panes all around with dark paint. It will of course help if you shade your light so as to prevent any light falling directly on the window. Most important, do not forget your skylight if you have one, or glazed doors or even fan lights. You may find it simplest to make these permanently obscure by applying sufficient coats of some dark distemper or paint, or pasting them over with dark brown paper. There is another thing to remember. Make sure that no light shows when your front door or back door is open. In some cases it may be possible to fix a curtain in the hall or passage to form a light lock. But if this cannot be done, the light must be turned off before the door is open. Some people, perhaps, will only use one or two rooms at night in wartime. This of course would simplify matters considerably, as the precautions indicated would only have to be taken for those particular rooms. But you would have to take care not to show by mistake any light in a room where the windows were not screened, and also say that light did not reach the window of an occupied room through some open door. Do not leave things until the last, but get together the materials which you think you will need. If you wait, you may find that you have difficulty in getting what you wanted. Besides, your help is wanted in making effective the blackouts for the ARP exercises which are being arranged to try our defences from time to time. After all, it is only common sense to make our preparations in advance to meet a possible emergency. And as I said, there was a lot of cottage industries sprang up all over the place, selling bits of cloth, buttons of wood, special blackout tape, special so-called blackout cloth, which was just normal cloth, but they put a fancy name to it and sold it by the dozens. And to this day, some of the older buildings in some towns and cities, if you look right up at the very top floor in some cases they still have the tape across the windows from the war long forgotten about they've never removed them so that one is civil defense public information leaflet number two your gas mask and masking your window